All right. Okay. Uh, you know, if there's any word that sends shivers down people's spines, mm -hmm. it's cancer. The it's moment cancer. you hear cancer, it's like... Ooh. Oh yeah, that, that's that's even more than HIV now because mm -hmm. for HIV everyone yes, knows than HIV now because mm -hmm. for HIV everyone yes, knows that as far as you take your drugs you can live as as, as long, long as you and want. as normal as you would like. But mm. when it comes to cancer, it's a different ball game altogether. Now we have an oncologist, Dr. Bolanli Adegboiga, joining us in the studio now to talk to us about uh, cancer and uh, different types of cancer and how uh, as you've as it is found mm. in the part of the world where we are right now. Yes, and also joining us from Abuja is the program's uh, director of Project Pink Blue, uh, Sarah Dansoho. Uh, good morning and thanks for joining us on um, this uh, it's good to day. Have you as the world ladies. Max mm. Cancer, uh, you know, tries to beam the searchlight on this uh, disease. Uh, it's got so good to have you ladies uh, right here. Let's start with you, Dr. Bolani. Thank you so much. Good morning. Yes. Um, talk to us about cancer. I mean, today is World Cancer Day, and for us, our biggest concern is how it affects uh, Nigerians. How bad is it in Nigeria? Well, cancer is just like you said, is a word nobody wants to hear mm. in any family. You don't even want your enemy to have it. But yes. be as it may, it's, it's common now, commoner now than it used to be. The studies have shown that cancer kills more than malaria and TB and HIV mm. together. Mm. So with this, and then um, you can't be too sure who's going to have cancer, and it has no regard for anybody, no regard for age, no regard for sex, no regard of status. So the essence is early detection, so as to achieve cure. Hmm. So and then we're trying to also talk away uh, the stigma. Mm -hmm. People try to hide it and cover it a lot, such that you may not even tell their spouse, not talk of their immediate family on time. And then they keep going. People see it as an attack, especially in this side of the world. Among blacks, they see it as an evil, evil harrow, as an attack. Mm -hmm. So people go from church to the mosque mm -hmm. to the herbalist before coming to the hospital. And by the time they are coming, it's already an advanced case. And then you can actually just manage and treat palliatively. But we're not talking about early detection. Mm -hmm. When that is possible, then we can still achieve cure in more than, in so, like in colorectal cancer. If detected early, nine out of ten can actually be cured, mm. and so also for most other cancers. Colorectal would be the GIT, the intestines. In okay, intestines. Oh. So that, uh, okay, so that people can understand. All right, uh, yeah. let, let me come to you, uh, Sarah, in, in our Buja studio. When it comes to cancer, the word cancer, we know there are different kinds of uh, diff or different types of cancer, but here in Nigeria or maybe in Africa, which of which of those is is more prevalent? when it comes to in comparative terms, which is more common here? Okay, the thing is that breast cancer is the most common cause of death in women in Nigeria, followed by cervical cancer and prostate cancer and there and so. Okay. All right, T talk, to us, talk to us about uh, if breast cancer is one of the commonest, uh, hmm. talk to us about the prevention, because that is even the, the first uh, 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 steps in handling or taking care of these issues generally. How aware are people when it comes to preventing breast cancer or cervical cancer or all the other ones? Okay, the truth is that like 60% uh, of people are already aware of cancer. And so this year, we made the theme for this year, World Cancer Day, is I am and I will, which is individual to take responsibility of creating awareness and making, making the noise about cancer and so on. Okay, uh, let's go. Uh, Dr. Bolanli, yeah, she, she says 60%. I mean, if 60% of the people are aware of, of, cancer, of cancer, that in itself really should be... A good thing but of course it's one thing to know or be aware that cancer really uh, truly uh, could be a deadly disease but is what is another thing for people to actually put themselves out there and you know go for for a test because I doubt if you're sincerely would even readily want to go <laughs> well just like you Why said not? yeah the, 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 fair, the fair is still there are. okay mm. unfortunately the fair is actually common out here right. unlike uh, in the developed countries people want to come out they want to share their success stories they want to talk about how the journey had been and mm -hmm. then we have a government there but here in nigeria 
some of our colleagues are even shying away from screening because after screening, do you have something to offer them? Mm -hmm. Cancer, just like I said, is very expensive. So at times you'll be like, it's better a known what you don't know. It may just be better than for you to know and you're not able to do anything about it. Talking about prevention of cancer, mm -hmm. it's actually going to start from the causes of cancer. One major cause of cancer mm -hmm. is aging. And de definitely there's nothing anybody can do about that. You're going to, if, I, if you're aging, you're not going to do anything about that. But then it goes back to living elderly when you are aging, eating properly, eating the correct diet. And then also another major cause is family history. So people don't disclose, if you, you're, at, at times patients come to the hospital and they'll be like, do you have history of disease? They said they don't know. Now we have come to realize that the fact that they are not even aware. Some of it, okay, they will tell you it's not, they, they don't have the family history. Mm -hmm. Whereas it's the fact that they don't know. Some people don't pass on the history. They don't even know what killed their great grandmother. They don't know what is happening to an auntie that is back there in the mm -hmm. village. And you are here, you are here. So when you say family I, history, I need to put this in perspective. If you have a first cousin who... Uh, came down with cancer and unfortunately lost their lives. Is, should that be... It's a major one. A major For instance, okay. in breast cancer, if a mother, your mm. aunt and mm. your first cousin has had it, it's a, it's a strong family history. So also in male, if mm. a father, your uncle or your brother has had prostate cancer, it's a strong family history. Ovarian cancer also runs in the family. Then the colorectal cancer, just like I said, among mm. others, runs in the family. About the patient, they had osteosarcoma. That's the cancer of the bone. Like three of them, three siblings in the family wow. actually died. It was the third person that we got it that got it died in Luth, and then she was able to give this history that two of the siblings have died from osteosarcoma. So when you have something that is reoccurring like that in family, in such a case, people like that will have to start their screening earlier mm. than mm. stated. Mm. Like colorectal cancer, if the general population is going at 60 years, with a strong family history, may want to start at 50 or even young, uh, lesser than that, mm. so as to catch it early. We, we often hear, wh when, it, when it comes to the issue of uh, family history, like you said, a lot of people use this, ah, it's not my portion. You know, mm. the Nigerians are very good with that stuff. Yeah. I, I, I wonder how that compounds the issue. This belief that uh, it's not my portion, even if my family, my father or grandfather has died of I this. I reject it. I reject, exactly. I yes, reject it we, and all it's, of a, that. it's a major thing that we actually deal with in the hospital. Mm. And that is even another cause for this de de delayed presentation. Yeah. Because when it comes, they would have gone to the church, you'd have casted out, you'd have bounded, and so many <laughs> other things like that. <laughs> and that is why when treating cancer is an holistic approach, mm. apart from the chemotherapy, the radiotherapy, the surgery part of it, we put on psycho-oncology, like we have a team in Luth, the one-stop breast cancer clinic. The okay. psycho-oncologists are there, so we're able to ad ad address that. Then in my clinic, we run, we have spiritual aspect to it. We bring in some pastors mm. we, to counsel them, to pray with them, mm. such that if you, if you, if you know they're coming to a center where all these things are there, the denial would have been addressed. Okay. The spiritual part, don't worry, we we'll join ourselves with you. Okay. We are joining our faith with yours. <laughs> we help them, and it helps a lot. Okay. Why? Because some people, we call some people that they have like seven lives. Because you feel they are going to die, they bounce back again. Some of them with a good family support and their spiritual belief, it actually helps them in fighting it. The faith, actually, we don't, we don't put it back, but we tell them that, come, Let's add these ones to the treatment we are mm. giving. It goes a long way. Mm. Okay, let's uh, take, bring in uh, Sarah. I mean, Sarah uh, is in our Abuja studio, of course. Uh, you, you've been doing a lot of uh, work and advocacy as far as uh, con cancer awareness is concerned. Give mm. us a picture of, you know, how people are responding, especially uh, knowing that Nigeria does not really have uh, mobile uh, cancer centers or uh, enough places where people can actually go check themselves out, even if they wanted to. Okay, so we, we, we go to the grassroots areas to create awareness and we provide free screening to them. And the problem is that for prostate cancer, men usually find it difficult to come out for screening. So the strategy we use for prostate cancer is we take the awareness to meet them wherever they are. For example, there are much men in spare parts markets. We went there to provide free screening for them. We went to churches to meet with the pastors to organize the men fellowship so that we provide them with screening. So we, 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 find, we look out for different strategies to reach out to people because most people, when they hear cancer, mm -hmm. they find it difficult to come around for that screening. So 
most people just use that uh, it's not my portion syndrome we call it it's not my portion syndrome because once they hear it they will just start shouting it's not my portion and whereas cancer is can happen to anybody the disease can you know so most people need to be aware of this so we take it to them most times oh. okay uh, all right L let me ask you uh, before we get to the streets to hear from the people mm. uh, what they feel about cancer let me stay with you sarah uh, fr from your work okay. with the people what what is the level of response so far you you talked about the challenge but how how is it changing are, are people agreeing uh, to come out now willingly or, or from what what are you what are you discovering okay like right on saturday we had our world cancer day walk and the turnout was really massive we saw like over two thousand people came out to walk and to create awareness on cancer and previous years they don't really pay attention to that but this year there is a lot of turnout so I'm sure that the awareness is reaching out to diverse uh, people, so awareness is going far. The only, the only thing now is our treatment centers in the country is so poor. In the country of over 2 million people, 200 million people, we have no less than three working uh, treatment centers. So there is a challenge, so we call on the government to really pay attention to our cancer treatment centers across different uh, geopolit uh, geopolitical area. Yes. Thank you very much, uh, Sarah Dan Soho. She is the program's director, Pink Blue, joining us from Abuja studio there. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank uh, you. We'll take, you. Um, you know, let's go to the streets, find out what do people really know about cancer and uh, how are they responding oh, yeah. to, to the possibility mm. of that actually happening beyond saying, it is not my portion. <laughs> well, we did go out there to seek the views of some uh, Lagosians. Uh, let's hear them. You know that cancer is a deadly disease. And to be honest, I've never gone for any test regarding it. But you know, as ladies, we are being told to always check ourselves. Like, once in a while, you just check for lumps on your breasts to know you know, we've been taught on those kind of things. So once in a while, I do my own personal screening. But I've never been to the hospital to do any tests regarding it. Actually, privileged to know so much about cancer because of what I do. I'm a registered nurse. And actually, cancer is a, a very, very um, prevalent thing. That, but most people don't know about it. What I do know about it is that it can be prevented. And um, actually, you can actually reduce the effects of it if you are able to detect it as early as possible. I don't really go for checks like anytime I go to see my doctor I do ask questions and all but I know cancer is more of a lifestyle um, issue you know based on what you eat and all. The, the most rampant case of cancer is breast cancer so for me um, I, I, I would implore all women to check it's something they can do on their own and they notice any lump, they should go to the hospital, you know, to find out what exactly it is that is there. There are some um, lumps that are not cancerous and they can be re removed in time if they are um, detected in time. The lifestyle of people uh, influences how much they are exposed to these cancerous diseases. Uh, we've been encouraged to go natural and I think that is very key, especially for people who live in urban centers where you don't have time to cook good meal. But going natural is very, very key to avoid diseases such as cancer. But I also am very hopeful that the cure to the disease will come out soon. And uh, But while we are waiting and trusting God for the cure, people should ensure that they, they sleep well, they eat well, and they take a lot of water. I think water is life. All right. What else do you need to add to what that? What else? You know, you know, it's quite interesting when Nigerians, when you hear Nigerians, you know, reeling out yeah. what they know and how they feel. And very enlightened, about some of these you know, views there, yeah. especially the last mm -hmm. gentleman who talked about lifestyle, what we eat, and 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 you know. water. Now, Doctor yes. Dugwig, uh, I wonder how much you agree with the last the last speaker there, especially when you talk about talking about eat natural and mm -hmm. drink lots of water. Well, I quite agree. Mm. They're talking about lifestyle. Mm. It's much more than the diet. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because the diet, 
uh, average uh, Africa uh, average African meal is actually good. We take lots of uh, fibers and uh, and vegetables and vegetables. We take quite a number of us. Uh -huh. When we talk about lives, and, and because of this, some people also have this misconception. That's why they feel that ABBA, there are some ABBA drugs out there mm. or that can treat cancer. But studies have shown that this cannot be quantified yet. As in, there's no so much success story about that, and there's no more publication that can actually substantiate that. So when we talk about that, a good diet is very important. But the lifestyle will actually hammer more on alcohol and cigarette smoking. Okay. That's even the major one when you talk about lifestyle. Major one when you talk about lifestyle. Because and there seems to be a, 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 you know, some kind of epidemic that I've noticed. I was out to eat grilled fish yesterday. And I saw in this place so many young people, exactly. all of them with shisha. Exactly. I don't know if you... And you know, then up to them, 80, and 80 to 90 percent of cancer, especially the head and neck cancer, is associated with smoking mm -hmm. and taking alcohol. In fact, they are like twin. They work hand twin in hand. Levels. Then by the time you go from that... The people like that kind of lifestyle, they also tend to be promiscuous. STDs comes in, and that one is a major cause in cervical cancer mm. and then other things. So talking about lifestyle, we should do better, especially to in the present Nigerian of today, with a whole lot of illicit drugs, abuse, and some other thing, is actually a major cause, and it's going to cost more and more of that. And of course, the, the health minister did raise an issue last year that people need to move away from sedentary lifestyle. Yes, yeah, exercise we, is we very important. We have to sit for two hours oh, yeah. every morning. Oh, yes. <laughs> and we sit, we sit continually. You know, and we continue other. to sit. And then after you know, that, we still sit, sit again the, to uh, no, sit I'm in sure front in, of the in, computers yes, and so I'm on. I'm sure mm. in between you should take stroll. You where, know, do you exercise, where do you take the stroll? Where do you walk? Exercise should not be so, so... The routine, the consistent actually matters in exercise. Okay. Not until you go to the gym, in your sitting room, every 10 minutes, 10 minutes every morning can go a long way. Yeah. Even when you cannot afford the one hour or two hours at the gym. Okay. It goes a long way to burn some calories. people should do yoga. Uh, yeah, it's also part of it. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Is that how they do yoga? Uh, okay, sorry. And they squeeze the body and all of that. All right, Dr. Bolanle Adeboiga, an oncologist. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you very program. much. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thanks. All right, you know, when you talk about cancer, it's always good to hear it from uh, another perspective of a survivor. Mm -hmm. uh, we do have one here in the studio. Here's uh, Victor Olegibe. He is a survivor of nasopharyngeal cancer. Very, very uh, tongue-twisting uh, <laughs> word there. Uh, uh, of course, he's the managing director of Grounded Promotions Media. He's also a business development officer and uh, all of that. Uh, it's so good to have you uh, okay, on the show you. this morning and uh, congratulations on your survival. Not so many people really are able to, uh, you know, can say the same, you know, ha the life before and after cancer. Mm -hmm. uh, talk to us about this nasopharyngeal cancer first of What is it? Okay, first of all, I would like to say thank God. God is great, you know. Yeah. Nasopharyngeal cancer is the uh, cancer of the nasopharynx. Nasopharynx is like the junction where the ear, the nose, and the mouth meet. You understand? Mm -hmm. So you know you That's have ENT. Yes. Okay. So you know you have um, sometimes when you eat and then we probably rise and you mistakenly swallow wrongly, it mm -hmm. comes out through your nose. Yes. yes. That place. Mm -hmm. That ah. junction. That junction. Okay. Yeah. So that's where the I had I had cancer. Yeah. So you know I didn't know it was cancer in the first place. Anyway, it just started as. Um, normal kata, you know, breathing issues, and I just felt it was normal kata, and probably NASA, I didn't think, yes, yes, so, but, oh. yeah, so, but it, it, it went on for a while, it went on for a while, and um, at a point, affected my ear, hmm. and then I, I, I spoke to my mom about it. She was like, is all those earpieces used to carry up and down and all those things, <laughs> and, you know, so, I, 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 I was feeling uncomfortable about it, so I tried to make a few moves. I went to Maya. I met my my friend's mom. She works at FMC, Mrs. Um, Kechi Nelson, mm. and we went to the hospital. The doctor said it was sinusitis. Wow, well, what is sinusitis? That is misdiagnosis right there. Mm. That is mis misdiagnosis. Mm. Yeah, sinusitis is like the swelling of the sinus. Okay. So I thought it was that. It gave me a nasal spray. I was spraying that for a long time. It wasn't working. It was just easing the, 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 discomfort. the airways, yeah. Mm. So, but I came back to Lagos. I went to a private hospital. The same thing. They gave me spray. And f after a long time, I had to. I told the doctor straight to his face. I was like, oh, guys, it's not working. Let's try How something How long else. from the time mm. that you actually 
discovered this discomfort. And all the time that you were going from, uh, you know, uh, from medical center to medical center, mm. To actually, when getting, you discover that getting oh, the wrong diagnosis, yes, how yeah, long that's that like between 20, 2015 December, mm -hmm. 2016. So 2016, when 2016? Two months, three 2016. months, four months. No, that's like 2015 going. Okay, I when I when I when I got to know that I had cancer was in 2017. Mm. So that's, that's that's like two years. That's over, that's over. over two years. Like yeah. a year, almost. A year, year, a year plus. Like a year plus, yeah. So, so at what point did did you discover that did they discover that this is really cancer? Yeah. That, okay. Like I said, I had to confront my doctor and say mm -hmm. this thing is not working. Mm. Uh, so let's try something else. Let's. I mean, let's check what's inside. Let's know what's up. Mm -hmm. I said, okay. He was thinking about it. Let's go for a scan. And when I went for a scan, I was told that there was a lump the back of my nose and <laughs> that was kind of a little bit crazy you know yeah. I naturally don't panic so I was like what do we do now they said I'll have to go for a biopsy check what the lump is if it's cancerous or non-cancerous mm -hmm. so that took a while that took me to loot that took me to loot ENT and you had to go through the process of um, you know doctor seeing the doctor explaining and everything and finally we did the biopsy and it came out that it was cancer you know malignant or benign if, mean, it's, if it's malignant were it's, they able to okay well of course if it was yeah. malignant you would know what it would have yeah. uh, I, I like, I like when you say you yeah. naturally don't panic, panic. I, I see I see it yes. in you like it's so unbelievable. You don't, it's you so from, from cool, your demeanor, you, you're very cool, calm, packaged, and collected. <laughs> how, how, how did that help you in yeah. fighting it? Because when you don't panic, because I understand from, at least from testimonials of survivor and those who are managing it, fighting it requires a lot, a lot of strong will. Mm, and how has how, how that from mind of not panicking help? How did it help in fighting the cancer? Okay, um, first of all, I had to protect my energy. Mm. You know, mm. the energy surrounding me. I did not need any form of sympathy. Hey, sorry, uh -huh. hey, yeah, hey, yeah. And I saw you do my village. No, I didn't want to hear anything. I just had to surround myself with every form of positivity. And then my cousin, who is a nurse in the UK, and to Goma, she told me before we started that, look, first of all, you have to think. You have to think life. Mm. You know, mm. that's the first decision. Mm. Do you want to leave? So the struggle is the struggle to stay alive. And it's not even the struggle to defeat cancer. It's the struggle to stay alive. So she told me, before the treatment, before anything, you need to start building up your immune system. You understand? Take a lot of water, fruit, and everything. Because as we are like this, we are not even sure how strong our immune system is. True. So um, um, I like to tell people, since after the whole process, that it is not really the disease or the ailment that kills. It's, it's the immune it's system. The, it's the treatment process. It's very harsh. Aha. Uh -huh. hmm. It's very, very harsh. And can your immune system actually take the harshness of the yeah. treatment? That's so that's another thing. Hmm. So, you know, I, I had to start building up my immune system, taking a lot of water, fruits, healthy food, so that, you know, when I start and it goes down, it doesn't go too low. Mm -hmm. So that helped me. So, you know, and the family, you know, encouragement as in my family was just up at the had my back give also. us an idea of what you were eating because i mean this is really practical yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm sure people at home are like look can you just give us tips about what exactly are the healthy foods that you had to you know like switch to or become more conscious of eating okay it's basically fruits, fruits. vegetables mm. uh -huh. everything that can build my blood mm. and okay. immune system Vegetables and fruits. Yes, and then also and water. a lot of water. A lot of water. Did you like add right exercise now, to it? Naturally, I, I do exercise. Okay. So but but hmm. but you, you you had to stay away from some certain food. Um. No, don't because for that period. Uh, no, of course, but but they, they start hearing, don't but, eat but, <laughs> but they have to know. They, they have to know. Now, actually, that period, you know. Yeah. One of the symptoms of that cancer is you lose appetite. Okay. Mm. So I wasn't really eating. I give me food now. I fit take one spoon. I don't tire. Wow. <laughs> so my friends would be like, "What's wrong with you?" Say like, "Are you okay?" And that's how it was, you know. So I wasn't really eating, but I was trying to eat anything that could give me energy. Mm. You know that 
could give me energy to do whatever I need to do. All know. right, Sh share with us, we know that treatment or management of cancer is quite expensive. When it comes mm. to the cost of it, mm. uh, I wonder how, how that went down. Okay, about that, it's very costly. Yeah. Anyway, it's very, very costly. And not just that, I think the accessibility to mm. it, it, the treatment is is another thing because, I mean, it's quite poor in Nigeria. Yeah. Very, very poor. And I think the government needs to do a lot of, they need to really do a lot of um, research on how they can improve that. Yes. Because, you know. Had all your treatment actually happened here in Nigeria? Yes. You didn't have to loot. go abroad? I started in Lutz. Okay. Dr. Adey Boyega was my doctor. Wow. Oh, Dr. Adey Boyega, they just left here now. Oh, that's so there are success stories, yes. really. Yeah. Was it because of early detection? Because, I mean, it yeah. took uh, like no. a year. It took uh, like a year to, and some to, people to know that it was actually you know, cancer. Within even six months. Yeah, yeah. 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 So um, it took like a year. And then, um, you know, having the right people around me. My yeah. doctor, she was always there for me. Even in the midnight, if I call her, she would tell me, mm. talk to me. And she's always sending me devotionals and, you know, spiritual things to help you uplift your mind. Mm. And... Um, you know, Are you family. still on any kind of treatment at all or uh, completely? I'm completely off. Wow. I'm mm -hmm. just trying to get okay. back my stature and you know, stay healthy. Yes, all right, stay Victor, healthy. I, I like your uh, disposition. Disposition. You yeah. are you are very calm. Nothing moves you and nothing <laughs> shakes you. And mm -hmm. you say you naturally don't panic. And I like yeah. that. If you apply that and you're That's able to fight, you, you're yeah. able to fight cancer, I know that you can apply that to fight anything in life. Yeah, my native name is Chim Dindu. Chim Dindu. What does that mean? Mm. My God is alive. God is alive. But your God is alive. Oh, okay. My God is our God is alive. <laughs> our God truly is alive. <laughs> thank you, Victor. Olegibe. Uh, Olegibe for coming on the program this morning. Yeah, thank it's you. Really nice to hear your testimony, and I know that's uh, the source of inspiration to other people mm -hmm. who may be going through anything like yes. this. Yeah. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. We're still talking cancer this morning. It's uh, World Cancer Day. We're trying to create awareness and let people know uh, what they need to know mm -hmm. about cancer. And we're trying to lay emphasis on prevention. Prevention, is, mm -hmm. they say, is better than cure. Yes, so we'll talk indeed. about it on what people should do and not do. We have joining us now Dr. Chika Nguigwe. Uh, she's in the studio with us. She is a representative of the Cancer Education and Advocacy Foundation of Nigeria, Sifone. She's also an anatomic pathologist. It's nice to have you join us this morning. Thank you. Nice to be here. Right. Yeah. We have been talking about uh, different types of cancer that are, that are more prevalent with our people and we got to know that breast cancer is very common mm -hmm. amongst uh, Nigerians or amongst Africans and then followed by cervical cancer and or maybe prostate cancer and all of that. But the issue of awareness and how to go about it when you are aware is something that we are trying to talk about. From your advocacy and, and the way you have engaged with people, talk to us about how aware people are and how ready they are to go out there to start seeking a treatment help. or seeking help. Um, thank you very much mm. for that question. And thank you for having me here. Right. Cancer Education and Advocacy Foundation of Nigeria, CIFON, is an NGO that is a non-governmental organization. It is a non-profit organization. It is made up of medics who are volunteers, mm. consultants like me and other specialists, cancer survivors, pharmaceutical companies, other non-governmental agencies who support, some government agencies also support, and then individuals who care about cancer as a whole. So what we try to do is to educate the masses because our knowledge is power. Even the Bible says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. Mm. So when you don't know, you don't even know there's something wrong. So instead of just getting patients to come to the hospital to be treated, why don't we go out there and let people know what cancer is, what you do to prevent cancer, mm. what can you know, predispose you to cancer, what could be in your genes that can cause cancer? What could be in the environment that can cause cancer? What kind of lifestyle will you live that will cause you to have cancer? Yeah. What are some cultural, you know, traditional practices or myths 
that are mitigating against cancer treatment, cancer awareness. Mm. What can government do to help cancer patients, especially indigent patients? Because our environment, Nigeria is a resource poor setting, but I know we're coming up. Mm. Let's even talk about you know, that aspect that you just mentioned now, that the need for government to actually come in. There, there is a lot of gap, a huge gap, when it comes to uh, you know, attending to cancer patients. Yeah. Definitely, in Nigeria. Of course, that's why organizations like yours, CIFON, have come in to close that gap. And it's interesting that you even have government, uh, you know, input in, in, you know, uh, in this uh, body of yours. Now, talk to us about the real, the, the, the major challenge when it comes to cancer in Nigeria. Thank you very much. CIFON, as an NGO and as a concerned body, has our president or chairman mm. as a former professor of oncology, Professor Durosimi Eti. There are other consultants there in the board in the air school. Dr. Manna, Dr. Unyana, Dr. Anazo, Madu, Quite who is a, a hematologist, a lot of people, Professor yes. Daramola, mm -hmm. my humble self, and others. Now, what we do is that every year, we hold symposia or seminars, or we can call conferences, in Abuja, which is the seat of power. And then people come from all walks of life. And there, we are specialists coming, the cancer survivors coming, the NGOs that are concerned with cancer coming, the Federal Ministry of Health comes too. Mm. Then outside, mm. you know, some foreigners who are mm. our facilitators, mm. who are cancer experts, come in. All right. Yeah, but what, uh, let's, so let's, 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 I'm getting let's, there. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm getting there. Because so when we come we're there... We're trying to manage time. So, yeah. yes. let's, let's so when in. we come there, we brainstorm on how best to help the cancer patient. Mm. So how are you doing so that there, now? What have you discovered in this brainstorming mm. sessions? Of no, in this brainstorming session, one, poverty is a, a big issue with us. Most of our patients cannot afford treatment and we're begging the government, please come in and take over this management the way it is in other clients. Lack of education. Mm. Lack of education. People don't even know what it is. So they, 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 a woman has a lump and she thinks it's okay until it's so bad and it's fungating and the breast is chopping off literally until you start seeing her bones and her muscles. She doesn't know. Some people have beliefs, cultural beliefs. They say if you have cancer, it is a cost. So don't let anybody know. And so some families shield cancer patients. And so they don't even come for treatment. And so it gets worse. Some say if they know, they will marry your daughters or your sons. So don't say it. Some make them outcasts. They stigmatize them. They discriminate, you know, against them. So Some all, these, women, all this add up to the high morbidity rate yes, in Nigeria. Yes, yes. And there's a okay. lot of psychological issues. The mm. women too, they are, the women, the, the husbands leave them. They don't come near them again. They don't sleep with them because they feel, they, you know, they're jinxed. Uh, yeah, but is, is cancer um, uh, communicable for anyone to think like that? Cancer is not communicable. Right. It is a non-communicable disease. But our people don't know. Mm. So they are scared. Yeah. The lot of beliefs and, you know, old wives tales, myths, misinformation, disinformation going around. So people don't even know. And they don't want to know. I don't now, want to uh, know. I'm very curious. Uh, we just had uh, Victor Olegebe here, yes. a, ca a cancer uh, survivor. And yes. I'm wondering, uh, is it typical of uh, the cancer narrative in Nigeria? H how many of such survivors do you uh, come across? He did talk about uh, the need to ensure that the immune system is in the right place, and he had to, you know, battle uh, with that. Uh, talk to us about, you know, how, for a person who has come down with this, how do you begin to even manage it to start with? Where do you start from? Thank you. There are so many factors which determine the prognosis, that is, outcome mm -hmm. of a patient with cancer. Mm -hmm. One is a patient's immune system. That is how well his or her body can fight the insult of the cancer cells. The other is the kind of treatment the patient gets. Is he or she getting radiotherapy, chemotherapy, surgery, and the likes, or other alternative treatments mm -hmm. like immune therapy? Is he or she going to the right medical facility? 
is he or she consulting specialists who know their limits, who can say, oh, I stop here, and the other specialist takes over? Is he or she assessing the right thing? Like, are you going to spiritual houses, and that is where your cure is, and you don't go to hospital till it's too late, and then they bring the patient to hospital to die? Now, when cancer patients are seen early, then it is easier to you know, treat. Some cancers, the earlier you come, they can nip it in the bud, just mm -hmm. cleave out, some are removed, and that's the end. For example, cervical cancer, if a woman comes early, the whole womb, the ovaries, the fallopian tubes, and the cervix are removed. And she mm -hmm. can still sleep with her husband because she has the other private parts, and then she's free. So, so there's some other cancers that you just remove, and that's the end. Mm -hmm. So it depends on how quickly mm -hmm. you come, and then what type of medication. Are we dealing with substandard medication? Uh -huh. Are we dealing with... And I know all that adds that, up to the cost of it. Yes. All right. We have to leave it here now, Dr. Oh. Chika. And we, we, it's, uh, this, this topic is a, is a very broad one, that if we have to start talking about all aspects of it, uh, we might not end it right now. But we must thank you very much for your work. Thank you so uh, much. Dr. Chika, we, we, anatomic uh, pathologist, thank you very much for coming on the program. Thank you for thank having you so me. Thank you so much. Thank right. you. Thank you.